that are biological or that people have addictions to that are still morally wrong. Uh, alcoholism would be a good example. People are alcoholics and yet we don't change our views on that. And so, and we don't turn away alcoholics from our churches. So, does that answer the question? Okay. Here is a question um, that says explain 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. Oh boy. Well, I, I would say that uh, in dealing with the 1 Corinthians text, which, which Matt, I believe, did you, did you make reference to that? I made reference to 1 Corinthians 6, but not 9 through 10. It's, uh, do you want me to look at it? Or? 1 Corinthians 6, uh, two Greek words are used there. Uh, one, Malachi. one is translated effeminate. I think a literal rendering means soft, uh, a soft man. Uh, and, and the other word, the King James at least, translates it, uh, the abusers of mankind. Uh, some, would, some would say uh, that means a man lying with a man. And even if it does, we have to understand cultural context that pagan worship involved men lying with men. Uh, if, if this is the only text you have to refer to, we have to admit that the Greek <coughs> is not as clear as we might think it is, uh, although that, that is contended, I know, by Matt. Yeah, I, um, <laughs> actually, I'm not going to disagree with you strongly. Uh, the, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the Greek practice of pedophilia, the older man with the younger man. Uh, the word used for effeminate here is the word that was used in reference to the young boys that were... Read the passage. Read the passage? Sure. Okay. I guess I would do... Okay. Well, did anyone bring their Bibles with us? <laughs> okay. Uh, this evening you can join us uh, in opening your scripture. Sincere apologies. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Um, would you like me to read verse 11? Such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the spirit of our God. Now, uh, regardless, the word, uh, I believe it's malakos for, for effeminate, I'm not, I don't remember the word for what is translated as homosexuals, it's actually a poor translation, to be sincere, uh, is rather the person who was uh, in this ritual act very much uh, in Paul's day, especially in Corinth, it was an issue of pagan worship, I don't deny that. Um, it was the person who was penetrating and the person who was being penetrated. It's a very graphic description, but it is a reference to temple worship with prostitutes. If you look further down in the text, it's verse 15. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? The, uh, the context is actually referring to prostitution, temple prostitutes. And again, I just argued against homosexuality, so I'm being fair with the text. And I think that we don't need to be afraid of certain passages. I can say, yes, this passage is referring to temple prostitutes and still maintain the position that homosexuality is not God's ideal. Okay, thank you very much. God set out man the way he intended it. The only positive relationship refers, uh, references in the Bible give uh, us is to heterosexual. Homosexual, homosexuality only gets negative comments from the Bible. Would anything else be justified um, as a sin? Well, I, I think in answer to that, I hope this answers the question that, yes, things changed after the fall of Adam. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Would homosexuality existed in Eden had they not fallen? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if we can say for sure, uh, but I, I, I'm okay with saying that no, it would not have existed, that variation occurred because of that. We also have to understand that we have a, a lot of variation genetically. Uh, different races being right or left handed uh, that changed after the fall. That we're not like Adam and Eve in nearly any respect. But that does not make it intrinsically sinful just because it's different. And I think we have to make the distinction between um, that which violates the individual. If, if you have two consenting adults within a same sex relationship, they are not violating each other. If you have a polygamous relationship, 
God's ideal, I think we can agree within this church, is monogamy between two people, man and a woman, given in Genesis, mm -hmm. but nevertheless it's two. And so polygamy uh, degrades all in the relationship because you cannot be fully committed to one person, especially the man should it be multiple wives or the woman should it be multiple husbands. The other issue with, let's say, pedophilia. Pedophilia is abusive to the child. The child cannot consent to the sexual act. Or bestiality, I would go as far to say the animal cannot consent to the sexual act. Right. And, and likewise, it is, it is an abuse of the gift of sexuality. Are you suggesting then that if homosexuality, as you have said, is a biological thing, um, then you are also saying that the lust that they have for each other would not be considered idolatry, but that would be natural, okay? If that is the case, is same-sex acts within a homosexual committed loving relationship acceptable? Is that something that we as a church can be okay with? I, I don't think that we have a right to speak for the church, to speak for the general conference. I think that what the four of us agree on here is that whether or not it is a sin that they should be welcomed into the family of God. Uh, we, we have presented different views as to whether or not it is sin. I would not expect such a conservative denomination as the Seventh Adventist Church to change its position on homosexuality, but rather that we should simply be inclusive of sinners, which we all are. Does anybody else want to say anything? Well, I think a comprehensive study on human sexuality from the General Conference, from our administration, encompassing our academics, encompassing our theologians, our pastors, our administrators. Seventh-day Adventists are very loving people. Uh, I think we all can agree that Christians are often very loving people. And I think we want to do what's right, but there is ambiguity on both sides of the issue. And I'm not going to say that the Adventist Church should accept without reservation homosexuals or homosexuality, but rather that the issue needs to be approached humbly, through scripture, but also understanding the biological aspect, and above all, through love and compassion. Thank you. How can homosexuality represent the image of God if he himself declares himself the bridegroom and his church the bride? Well, I, I think that the image of God, if, if we look at this as uh, Trinitarians, which we are, uh, the image of God is not a reference at all to gender. Uh, God, God does refer to himself often in the text of Scripture as masculine, but there are also references to God as being feminine. God is not man or woman. God is community. God is love. And because of that, because God is community and God is love, I think that a relationship, a committed relationship, reflects that commitment and that love. The, the gender of God is not something that is prescribed in Scripture. Well, uh, also, um, I, I'm not sure if the idea of a bride versus a bridegroom is necessarily the greatest argument. Um, again, I don't, I don't believe that a homosexual relationship is reflecting God's image. However, um, Christ, uh, especially in, in several passages, uh, namely, I believe, Colossians 1.15, he is the image of the invisible God. Um, I don't think that the bride is collectively a female, nor do I believe that uh, Jesus is this kind of male counterpart to the church. I think that these are images that the Bible writers have used to help us understand the relationship that we as a people of God have to God. Um, that's okay. This one is for Raymond. You, you cannot take the view off of sex Sex is what makes a man a man, a woman a woman, and that is what makes God's image. How do you define homosexuality from Romans? Well, I mean, that's problematic. If, if sex is what makes a man a man and a woman a woman, then those who cannot have sex are not men and are not